Let's get into AMD's revolutionary RDNA 3 GPU. AMD's just making the news all day today. And it's pretty cool. Let's get into it. So, AMD's first and upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs, such as the flagship Navi 31 chip for the Radeon RX 7000 series, are rumored to feature up to seven chiplets. This revolutionary graphics architecture will be utilizing a variety of graphics, memory, and I.O. dies, a first for consumer graphics cards. AMD has been the pioneer of chiplet technology. They brought it to the mainstream consumer segment with their Ryzen CPUs, and now they are going to do the same in the GPU market. There have been several rumors and speculations regarding the use of MCM, which stands for multi-chip module, as a design methodology for the top RDNA 3 GPUs for a while now. In the latest tweet by Greymoon55, the leaker states that the flagship Navi 31 GPU can feature as many as seven chiplets. Maybe 31 equals two 5 nanometer, four 6 nanometer, one interconnected controller, seven chiplets in total. The AMD RDNA 3 GPU lineup will feature both MCM and monolithic designs and utilize TSMC's 6 nanometer and 5 nanometer process nodes. For the Navi 31 GPU, the flagship is going to feature two GCDs based on a 5 nanometer process node, four MCDs based on the 6 nanometer process node, and a single I.O. die that will also be based on the 6 nanometer process node. The GCD is the graphics compute die, which will be the main GPU chip on board the inter. Poser, while the MCD is regarded as either the memory complex die or multi cache die, and it will feature the infinity cache and the related memory controllers. The IO die will consist of the media engine and other IO layers of the chip. We can't say for sure if the MCD will be featured on top 3D stacking or separately on the interposer. The AMD Navi 31 GPU, the flagship RDNA 3 chip, would power the next-gen enthusiast cards such as the 7900 XT. We have heard that AMD will drop CU compute units in favor of WGP workgroup processors on its next-gen RDNA 3 GPUs. And here's some, basically some uh, architecture layouts for you guys. You can go look at it via the links down in the description below you have your synchronization links and then boom 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 and then how it all connects to the memory so the memory here is split up between the two or or between the sets sorry the navi 31 gpu configuration here features two gcds and a single mcd each g each gcd has three shader engines six in total and each shader engine has two shader arrays each shader array is composed of five WGPs, and let's see, and each WGP features eight S, uh, SIMD32 units with 32 ALUs. These SIM, uh, SIMD32 units combine to make up 7,680 cores per GCD and 15,360 cores in total. The Navi 31, MCD will be linked to the to the dual GCDs via a next generation Infinity Fabric interconnect and features 256 to 512 megabytes of Infinity Cache, which is look, man, I really want that Infinity Cache to start being leveraged in an algorithm, but that's fine. Each GPU should also feature four memory connect links. That's a total of eight 32-bit memory controllers for a 256-bit bus interface. Um, that's important because that will affect mining performance 256 bit bus obviously a pretty big bus but not as large as like the 384 bit we've seen in the 3000 series gpus amd has been kind of ditching the larger memory bus interfaces for of course the infinity fabric to compensate for that one of the things to note there though is that in traditional mining algorithms we haven't seen a big boost in that performance level so with that 256 bit bus we are still going to get slightly faster gddr6 but that's also going to be happening on the refresh with the 6950x all the way down to the 6650x my assumption here is whatever the 6950x t 
NFT basically gets in mining performance is what the top end 256 bit bus 7000 series would get as well, provided we don't see some sort of changes in algorithms to compensate or leverage the infinity fabric. And as so far, even with the 6000 series, there hasn't been anybody within the mining scene that has leveraged the current architecture, which does feature a rudimentary version of, of the infinity fabric uh, in it, right? So uh, I'm not really expecting much mining wise, improvement wise on this, these particular GPUs. There have been several rumors stating that the upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs are going to outperform whatever NVIDIA has to offer in terms of rasterization performance. It looks like AMD will take the lead by offering the first MCM powered GPUs under its Radeon RX graphics card lineup. But at the same time, NVIDIA is expecting to quickly transition to its MCM GPU lineup, which will offer over three times performance boost over Ampere GPUs. So there you go. That is the information we have. I'm pretty excited for it, for sure. Uh, I think like from the, the tech nerd side, from the gaming side, all that stuff, RDNA 3 is looking fantastic. From the mining side, like I said, whatever we see happens with the new slightly faster 6950 XT and its bump in memory speeds, it still has that 256 bit bus. I don't think that we're gonna see much performance improvement over the current available GPU mining algorithms than we will over kind of the refresh here on the 6950 XT all the way down to the 6650 XT. That being said, there could be something that comes down the, later down the pipeline, which favors, of course, some sort of utilization of the Infinity Cache. And if that is the case, it could get really interesting really quickly. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.